Alrighty then, um, so here we are, the new order, Old World Blues, which is the mod. Uh, so essentially the new order, for any who do not know, is a mod where um, the Nazis won World War II. He he he, look at that, look at that big Nazi faction right there, with Reich's commissariats and all. Um, however... Just because the Nazis won doesn't mean that they actually get to reap the benefits and, you know, win totally. Because, well, the Nazis suck. Like, they really sucked. However, um, this isn't the full mod release. The full mod release will be sometime this year. However, this is a, um, this is a kind of teaser where you can play four interesting and uh, ridiculous nation uh, around Urals. So there are the Noble Ural League, uh, who I nicknamed the like Spartan Order from Metro, just uh, with the Nazis. Uh, there's Arimburg, which is essentially peasant communes. Well, a city commune plus a lot of peasant communes uh, trying to, you know, Try, trying to be free and all. Uh, yeah, Uralic are like essentially kind of stalkers, kind of. Except they're from Vorkuta, the Vorkuta Gulag, um, which is just great. Then there's Turlewanger's Brigade, uh, who, which is just an undisciplined mob of Nazis that are renegades, uh, renegades from the main Nazi forces. Um, who do not really care about anything except burning, raping, murdering, and all that kind of stuff. Uh, good Midnight Red Army. Th theoretically, there's also a fifth nation, yeah, but I do not know what, what the fifth one is, so yeah. Um, and there is a fifth street secret tree. I think it might have something to do with kill the German scum, kill the scum. The time has come to make our move and there will be no turning back. This path will lead to the death of Durlawanger and will likely end the game. It might have something to lead to that, but I have no idea. Um, and the last one is Magnitagorsk. As you can see, their flag is a triangle. Why? Because Magnitagorsk is a mountain. Uh, Gorsk in uh, Russian means like mountains. You know, as in it's a town near a mountain. Magnitagorsk in real life was a uh, industrial center uh, for the Soviet Union. Uh, in this timeline, Mr. Trofim Nisyanko, which has a very, very detailed uh, background on the pick over there, has um, survived the collapse of the Soviet Union. This guy is essentially like a Soviet geneticist um, in real life, a kind of mad scientist kind of guy. And uh, he has escaped the collapse of the Soviet Union to the mountain fortress um, and the industries of Magnitogorsk, along with the uh, essentially remnants of a NKVD motor rifle division. So, yeah, he's got he's got loyal, well, not really loyal troops. They're like protecting his vital research, quote unquote. Uh, he can go insane because he's a mad scientist. Ruled by a medical maniac scientist and his crew of crazy yes men, the scientists of Magnitogorsk are willing to sacrifice anything to defeat the Hun. Because, you know, our ultimate objective is to make a Russian super soldier to defeat the Nazis. Um, and you have a meter of Lysenko's sanity uh, and a meter for your NKVD influence. Now, NKVD, uh, in case you don't know, is the secret police of the, um, yeah, quote-unquote-unquote-unquote unquote unquote geneticist, very pseudoscientist kind of guy. Um, and the NKVD, in case you do not know, is the uh, Soviet secret police before the KGB, or KGB. And I know I know all the Derlwanger death events are just hilarious. Uh, so, yeah, we are in a political environment that is uh, mostly dominated by the other actors around here, mainly Arjenburg, um, Ural League, and the Derlewanger Brigade. Of course, everyone else doesn't have a focus stream. For example, Tumen, which is led by the Communist Party still, under Iron Lazar, nothing. Sviatoglovsk, which has um, a Red Army faction of Konstantin Rakasovsky, uh, and their 
party is literally called the Red Army. They've got nothing. The Nazis. They've got nothing. So it's not like nothing's gonna happen around the world. There are events that are supposed to simulate what's going, what's gonna happen in the full release of the New Order. So, um, the Soviet Union has disintegrated into a million warlord states, and we are playing probably the most batshit insane of them. I mean, okay, uh, Dirtwanger's Brigade is definitely more insane, but they're not Russian, they're Germans. Do they even have a culture? Uralic, yeah, Uralic. Um, so we're in the middle of the Urals, and, um, yeah, let's go. So, research slots, we can research things. Uh, we've actually got research speed bonuses because we're fucking insane. Apparently that's enough to make you, uh, make you good at research. Oh wow, we've even got, like, we've got, like, a bunch of research techs. Okay. Nice. Let's get some extra research, because research is good. Um, got a lot of decryption, which is going to make us, you know, see the enemy a lot. Uh, one thing that's kind of annoying is that the tech tree isn't that... Oh! Magnitogorsk added two civilian factories. Okay! Unlocks decisions for improving core industrial areas. Okay, so this is going to add two civilian, three civilian factories and six units of infrastructure. This is going to add four units of infrastructure and two civilian factories. This is just better. Unlocks decisions for improving decentralization or for improving core industrial areas. It's probably better to improve core industrial areas. So, yeah, let's do that. Uh, one thing about <laughs> Hail Omsk. So, uh, yeah, actually the other most insane Russian warlord state is Omsk. Um, you can see by their flag and the fact that they are ultra-nationalist, that they are interesting people. Another national spirit that we have is the Luftwaffe terror bombing. Essentially, uh, from bases in, uh, you know, Reich's Commissariat, Moscow, the Luftwaffe just continuously bombs a lot of these Russian states to make them, you know, make them not exist. Um, interface is being worked on. Uh, I feel like it looks good, it just needs to improve on the functionality. Uh, we need the motorized equipment, because, yeah, uh, we do not unfortunately have oil or rubber, but whatever. Uh, now, uh, you might be saying, well, ridiculously insane Russian warlords fucking... Oh, and by the way, if you look at in real life, the in real life history of Oscar Durlewanger, you see that he is the most, by far, one of the most fucked up people to have ever existed. Anyway, you might be saying, well, Russia seems like a real shit show. Well, just wait until we see Europe. Uh, someone asked about Italy. Essentially, what happened is the Germans dammed Gibraltar. Yeah, it's called the Atlant Ropa, and they just made a dam at Gibraltar. So the Mediterranean is now seriously drained of water, and there's a lot of new lands. Um, they're pretty shit though, that's the problem. They're like deserts. So it's not really all that useful to the people living there, especially the Italians, who got their like economy and all fucked up. Uh, now the national spirits on everyone else aren't showing, but yeah, yeah. national focus going on. Now one thing you need to know about TNO is that it's... Yeah, Stalingrad is now Paulusgrad. Uh, is that it's a mod that's focused more on like story and narrative then, uh, you know, boom, 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 justify war, go conquer everyone. So it's going to be a lot slower to play. Um, yeah. So yeah, Nova Polska. Yeah, someone noticed Nova Polska. So the Poles, uh, a lot of them are running away from, obviously, here. And some of them end up settling in Kazakhstan because... Fuck it, I guess. Um, they've still got the Germans on, you know, on, on their heels, but... The Germans, they, they don't, they, they, they've got other things to deal with. Um, okay, so the Black Mountain arises. Memorandum dot 1A from the lector Trofim Lysenko to all security, scientific, and supervisory personnel, blah, blah, blah. Content, all personnel should be advised regarding imminent intensification of industrial and operational activity. Uh, what's really, really good is that everything is written in, like, character and style. It's like the Black Mountain arises, you know? Uh, it's just a document. 
it's literally fuck a fucking document that fucking mad scientist guy might be like you know releasing to his goons it's pretty fucking good is Moscow now German culture? I think, like, only Moscow and a couple of others... And yeah, the mod's gonna run a little slow in a bit. Moscow and a couple of other states are German culture. The culture is just a cosmetic thing. There's no... Like, there's no difference that's made by the culture in game. In gameplay terms. Um, yeah. Oh, Cossack culture. Hilarious. Anyway, we've got decisions. Why? Because there's the NKVD. That we need to interact with. There's Lysenko that we need to interact with. And there's raids. Uh, why? Because we steal people to experiment on them. And also because raiding is sadly a part of daily life in Siberia. And as much as we hate to admit it, it's one of our few means of survival. As such, we must be ready to organize raids into neighboring territories to gather food, equipment, and resources. Um, if we get these resources, this loot, we can use it to build new schools, blah, 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 you know? Uh, and, um, yeah. Apparently there's the Aryan Brotherhood up here. Yay. Uh, this is us. This is the Ural League. You know, I think of all these people, like, maybe Kostanai is the only one we can actually take on. Because everyone else seems like uh, seems like they've got more divisions than we do. I wonder if it's a good idea to even try to get a raid going, but whatever. Let's see if we can do a raid. Uh, this is just gonna be me actually experimenting and fi finding out things because this is the first time I actually play it. Uh, it's not that the Germans do not give a damn about them. It's just that they just simply don't have the resources. Now, in the full mod, you're gonna you're gonna see this more because the Germans essentially have a civil war like one or two years into the game. They just don't have enough resources. Also, the supply lines are just like ridiculous. Like a lot of alternate history just kind of hand waves logistics away, and um, you know that doesn't really make any sense. Anyway, prepare raid against Kostanai. So Kostanai on our border over here are some kind of Islamic state, it seems. Uh, this is the Islamic part of Russia, by the way. Yeah, there is an Islamic part of Russia. And actually, you know, this is actually Kazakh. So yeah, it's the Islamic people. So we're gonna try to murder them and steal their people. Yes, steal their people. Let's see if we can get some loot. When will it be released? Who the fuck knows? Initiate a raid. Alright, start the border war. They don't seem to have anything, so we're just raiding their empty empty clay. Yeah, so if we win, we get one loot, and one of four options will happen. Relics of the past, food for the hungry, spoils of war, treasure. And they will lose one treasure, they will lose... Food, garrison, slaughtered, damaged machinery. Okay, so we we just fucked them up, essentially. And since there's no one on their side, we are default winning, which is nice. Anyway, speech on industrial productivity. Comrade Lysenko's speech. Annual industrial productivity summit. Redacted date, redacted location. Figures corroborated by the Industrial Research Committee, compiled by year reference volume 13, addendum 15E7. This is... yeah, exactly. Fucking great. Uh, an increase in mining productivity to the sum of 250 tons of steel a month. This amounts to a total of increase of 750 tons of steel in three months. Split of us, blah 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 blah. Uh, yeah, you know, it's just documents. I love it. The administration Porn. The opening of an industrial optimization facility to the south southeast of Magnitogorsk Central Complex. So, in case you do not know, uh, Magnitogorsk in Soviet times was like um, essentially an industrial town that kind of was sprung out of nowhere during the five year plans for steel production and um, chemical industry. So, it's very much a heavy industry town. Uh, I think we're playing Plakie Rasyani? No, if it's... 
если бы это состоятельно, если россияне могут быть плохие в мире, в которых Германия победила Вторую мировую войну, но ну да, ну да, кроме этого, мы, мы плохие. Блять. Uh, anyway, um, the complex will be operated by primary assets in civilian manufacturing, the individual 47530298, a civilian named Dmitry Varashilov. I just love this. On to concluding remarks, we note that there has been a rise in cases of pollutant-related facilities by 23.75% this quarter. We expect such numbers to rise as the efforts and industrial concentration continue. Workplace-related fatalities are also rising. It is to be noted that of these fatalities, 43.95% are recorded as involving the loss of a hand or a limb. Please refer to the last page of your brochures for fatality charts and possible research opportunities. Such an increase of, is proportionate with our projections. Um, anyway, so um, we are this bureaucratic hellhole that's just gone just out out of its you know original intentions anyway communic 17c to lieutenant general stepan bunkov content nkvd personnel are hereby ordered to immediately carry out the elimination of all subjects remove obstructions uh, of all subjects uh, indicating the list 66 subjections 3 5 and 17 former civilian administrations uh, inefficient personnel and potential disruptive elements NKVD security personnel are authorized to utilize lethal force in the pursuit of their duties should the subjects or anyone else attempt to obstruct or delay the operation. The bodies of the eliminated subjects must be handed over to the Anatomical Research Subcommittee for future experimentation or in use in agriculture optimization. So they're using them as fertilizer. Uh, Director Gisienko will oversee the appointment of new personnel to staff the positions left vacant. Communic over. So you can see why I want to play Magnin Dagarsk. Anyway, the fucking baby lit cavalries are trying to are trying to fight my glorious Ankebedet special troops. Uh, they will fail. Alright. Um, army readiness. Our army would be sizable, but the training of our individual soldiers has been lacking recently. Well it's actually not even that sizable. Anyway, training on the border will increase army readiness. We just need a lot of political power. Um, basic army preparations, army drilling, free. Does it cost anything? We'll increase army readiness. This decision costs free army drilling. Okay, so our current level of army drilling is 5%. This is gonna increase both. Okay, okay. Um, I wonder if the other... I'll, I'll check out the numbers later. Anyway. Stack bureaucracy. This will decrease the NKBD's disloyalty by 5%. The disloyalty is at 0%. Very good. Um, Yusenko's sanity is still at 100%. Uh, is the Saharan Desert feeling good? <laughs> That's... Okay, so um, the Sahara Desert is a zone of quote-unquote anarchy, but it gets, like, colon quote-unquote colonized or claimed by both indigenous states and... Um, like Liberia and Free France, yes, Free France is around, um, as the game progresses, because the reason there is like the quote-unquote anarchy stuff is that while there's people around here, um, although some of them, some of the states are pretty bugged, while there's people around here, uh, the German Air Force is bombing them from the Reichskommissariat Central Africa under Siegfried Müller. So... Yeah, like, the Germans in Africa are bombing this area to, you know, essentially deny it to the French. Why is there a hole in the African jungle? Oh yeah, this is because they, like, drained... Like, the water that they drained from here or something, they just... Oh no, 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 they drained the Congo... They dammed the Congo River or something and they made a big lake. I don't know, I don't know how to understand it. Oi, Blin. Anyway, um, so yeah, uh, the, what the Russians were talking about earlier on... Oh, there's two cavalry divisions. Can we beat them? Seems like it. Um, do we need to use... Uh, oh, we don't have command power. And plus, we cannot use um, special abilities anyway. But we are beating them. 
because their organization is lower than ours. So this is good because it also should give us army experience. Very nice. Oh man, we are gonna beat them in the border war. Oh crap, they're also coming in with more divisions. Oh no, they've got other divisions. Oh no, are we going to lose? If we can beat these guys, then we win. If we can't, we lose. I think I think we're gonna win because we're gonna beat this division first. Oh crap, actually no, we are gonna lose. I hate border wars. I wish that you could control them, honestly. Oh, 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 oh. We beat one of their guys. Oh, but they've got more divisions coming back up. That's gay. Oh, are we winning? Maybe, maybe we're winning. Oh, look at that! I think we're gonna lose. Because at some point one of my divisions is gonna is gonna lose all the organization. Ah oh, well we tried. Uh what are we gonna lose when we lose the border complex? Uh fifty political power, a thousand manpower, yay. And they get five hundred rifles. The raid fails. Fucking hell. Anyway, excerpt of speech seven BC. Why did the Nazis did it for the lols? Yeah, that's pretty much the Nazis in this mod. Um, and in real life. <laughs> it's pretty much them. Why did I not have a field marshal, though? Yeah, I lost a few AK-47s or whatever. Anyway, uh, Comrade Nisienko spoke at the annual officer's banquet. Meal 289. See special meal calendar in the meal calendar. Contact catering subcommittee of the officer's organization for further info. A transcript follows. Comrades, I speak to you on a matter of regional importance to the security of our ASSR. So, okay, so uh, these guys see it, see themselves as like the legitimate government of an uh, autonomous socialist republic. Uh, I think the Bashkir or... Yeah, the Bashkir, because it's like Bashkortostan or something. The Bashkir uh, Autonomous Socialist Republic. Recently, I've heard... So, essentially, they're saying, yeah, we are a remnant of the USSR. Everything else is just unlawful. Can you show Indonesia? Is Sukarno alive? I believe no. Oh, okay, no, actually, he is. Okay. So, Sukarno is uh, the leader of Indonesia. Yay. Uh, and they're a puppet. Uh, and the entire East Asia is a puppet of uh, Japan. However, China is, uh, you know, breaking free slowly but surely. Actually, maybe uh, Azad Hind, yeah, Azad Hind uh, is not a puppet, but they're their ally under the co-prosperity sphere. I'll just show you the factions. So there's the co-prosperity sphere, the organization of the free nations, which is essentially NATO, a little bit, a little bit weak sauce NATO, and the Unity Pact, which is the Nazis. And then there's the Triumvirate, which is, well, everyone in the Axis that doesn't like the Nazis anymore, because they fucked them over. Uh, except the Triumvirate members all hate each other, so this shit doesn't last very long. Like, yeah. Anyway. Uh, who else? Yeah, there's the Af... Uh, like, Unity Pact is in Africa too, but these three break off and form another faction at some point. Uh, because of events. Anyway, uh, recently I've heard rumors of unrest against uh, my emergency general secretaryship. And as a rightful member of the Soviets that constitute our state currently in reconstruction, I will not allow this treasonous behavior under the Republic's watch. Nor will my countrymen. Today, fellow men and women who pledge their allegiance to Marx, I call you forward. I call you forward to stand by me as I rid these men who plot to destroy our utopian society of science. Those who wish to tarnish our legacy will not be given a place in our society. Those who wish to destroy our way of life will not be given a place in our society. We must be rid of our we must rid ourselves of these cowards of science, these abominations of religiosity. End of excerpt. Uh, Lysenko di immediately following the speech detailed above, Lysenko disposed, see corpse disposal procedures and body disposal handbook or contact course corpse disposal subcommittee. For information on disposal of multiple high officials. Some became test subjects in numerous experiments, refer to subject conversion, blah blah blah. 
Okay, so here we are. We murder some people. Uh, we like to murder people. Uh, combat preparation program or armament planning C. Yeah, I feel like both of these are very important because our army seems to be shit. Uh, so essentially the problem with Magnitogorsk is that, well, you're murdering a lot of people and there aren't really that many people in here to begin with. So your, prob your problems are manpower and to maintain a, um, you know, maintain a uh, balance of power between the military factions and uh, yeah. Anyway, Armament Plan C is going to give us guns, while uh, Combat Preparation Readiness is going to give us drill. Now, what, are, what will be the benefits of drill? Army Readiness at a 4%. Anyway, Lysenko's sanity is going down. Raid in progress against Coast and I. Oh, okay. Apparently, the raid is still in progress. Sure, whatever. Um. Yeah, let's get let's get guns. Guns sounds pretty good. Um. Anyway, armament planning, there we go. One of the biggest weaknesses that the Sienko's army has is that we don't have enough bullets and ammunition to fight the Euro League and Euro Arimburg commune. This also coupled with the fact that we even have to ask the Benz of Durwanger's brigade for help. That fact has been another embarrassment for the proud man scientist, mad scientist. Uh, with war coming ahead, NKVD commanders along with the Sienko have come up with armament plan C. Armament Plan C, unlike its past plans, will be known by all soldiers in order for them to work together. Uh, plan C will have every soldier within the Enkavada not only be able to know how to fire their weapons, but also make how to make their own weapons in order to be the best army in the southern Urals. Every battalion will be required to work to make weapons together. Yusenko's reasoning is not only to make the best soldiers, but uh, it is to make the best camaraderie and strengthen efficiency as they work together in ideal Soviet Unionism. Soviet Unionism. Anyway. Uh, low manpower. I know, low manpower. We can prepare raid against a lot of people, actually. So, against the Ural League, that's not a good idea. Zlata Ust, who are the guys to the north, not a good idea. Prepare raid against Sverdlovsk. That's probably a really bad idea. Uh, oh, they don't have that many units. It's just... The units they have might be good. Krasnaya Gvardia. Uh, yeah, six uh, infantry plus one artillery. Which would probably be, you know, more effective than our own units. Um, well, how about Cuman? How many units do you have for... Yeah, seems like uh, seems like these guys are really the weaker of them all. But you know, the only way to win border wars are is to have better divisions than your opponent, really, because you do not have any control yourself. Anyway, we have a lot of political power, so uh, train. Considerable army preparation will increase army readiness by four. Okay, so it seems like it's basically the same. Comprehensive army preparation increases army readiness by six. Increases the Enkevide's disloyalty by five. So doing the higher tiers actually increases Enkevide's disloyalty towards you. Okay. Anyway, army readiness 10%. I'm sure this will have some kind of prog problems. And yeah, the, the China... The China situation is very interesting. China will definitely be a place I play in uh, when the full mod releases. 